examples for calculating a hypothesis test for one population mean. We've looked at right-tailed, left-tailed test, and now we'll look at two-tailed tests. So when I read this paragraph, it looks like I'm interested in average calories consumed per day by GVSU students. So our variable of interest is calories consumed, and our population then is GVSU students. So that's going to help me write my parameter definition. The next thing I see is my sample information. So remember, when you look at these paragraphs, if you don't have raw data, you need to know sample size, you need to know sample mean, and then you also need to know standard deviation. So there will be three measurements included on the sample when you're looking at a paragraph and you don't have raw data sample size, sample mean, and sample standard deviation. And then finally, I need information on what I want to show. So here I want to show that it differs, so the average calories differ from 3770, and I'm going to test that using an alpha equal to 0.1. <coughs> so now defining the population, we have GVSU students. My sample is 39 GVSU students. And just to make it easier on myself, when I write my conclusion in step five, I'm going to define my parameters. So we have mu equals mean number of calories consumed by GVSU students. So next I write my null and alternative. So you have capital H sub O, capital H sub A. The notation we have is mu, so we'll use mu down here. And then we wanted to show differs from 3770, so that's going to be my research hypothesis or my alternative. And then my corresponding null is mu equals 3770. So then we, in the testing phase, are making the assumption that the sampling distribution of X bar has a normal distribution, and to check that, we're going to check it based on conditions. So we have an n equal to 39, which is for all intents and purposes large. So we're going to assume that there are no outliers, and so a sample size of 39 would be sufficient to assume that the sampling distribution of x bar has a normal distribution. We've talked about how that would also, in the real world, have to be checked based on how many outliers there are. Um, this wouldn't be large enough if you had significant outliers. So then we'll calculate our test statistic. And to remind you of the formula, we have x bar minus mu sub zero, or the null value, divided by standard error. So plugging in the numbers that we have, x bar is 3,325. Our null value is 3,770. I have a standard deviation of 935 in a sample size equal to 39. So I'll enter that all at once. The numerator will get parentheses around it, and then the denominator will also. So I come up with a test statistic of negative 2.97. Now armed with that information, we're going to make a decision in step four. So the test statistic distribution is the t-distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. So here degrees of freedom is 38. So that tells us what curve we're working with. So then we'll put ourselves on the t-curve. It's centered at 0. Negative 2.97 would put me at this location. Now when we look at our alternative, because it's a not equal to, this is called a two-tailed test. And that means that we're interested in the possibility of it being less than 3,770 or greater than for it to not be 3,770. So it could be less than or it could be greater than. 
So that means we're going on both sides to both options. So we're interested in the area in both tails, hence it being called a two-tailed test. So there are a variety of ways to find these tails. I can find each of them separately. So remember, we're going second and then virus. And because we have a t-test statistic, we're using t-cdf. And it wants a lower bound or where the highlighting starts. So I can do just this bottom tail first. And then an upper bound or where the highlighting ends. And then my degrees of freedom. So that gives me in this section 0 0.003 if I round. So I could also find this top tail. So second virus, TCDF. So the highlighting starts at 2.97 and it ends at positive infinity and then 38 degrees of freedom. So what you'll notice is they're the exact same number and that's because these are symmetric curves. And so I know that the area above 2.97 would be the same as the area below negative 2.97. So you could find one tail and multiply it by two. You can find both and add it together. There are a variety of ways. So because that p-value is so small, I'm going to reject the null. So remember, because that's less than or equal to alpha, where alpha is equal to 0.1, I'm going to reject. So now our conclusion will start with there is sufficient. Because we rejected, we start step five with sufficient. And then the rest of it will just restate our alternative. So there's sufficient evidence to suggest, and we'll restate mu, mean number of calories consumed by GBSU students is not equal to 3770. So this is a two-tailed test. So that's all of the options in terms of a hypothesis test for one population mean. Next, we'll look at what can go wrong.